Yeah, this is an interesting grab bag. Junk drawer, box bottom figures. What we got here? Caveman. Like a caveman. It's not a Native American. He's more like some sort of barbarian or hun. Trying to think of the word right now. No, maybe it is a Native American. He's got the loincloth on there. And there's a nice bazooka guy. A lot of fun figuring. Oh, he's even got a rocket place, but that'll make it easier to figure out who it's by. Nice blue casting. Futuristic. I wonder if it's plastic craft from that War of the Worlds set. And this might be a Bergen. Very early. Uh, Ajax. Not sure. Vinyl. That's not a soft plastic. That's more like a vinyl or a rubber. Alright. And then uh, driver dude. Always, always good to have another driver or pilot for some odd craft that we end up uh, needing a, a pilot for. And the real reason to, to obtain the, the stash, or this is what drew me to it, are two to me toys uh, figures in their reduced like 30, 30, 35 millimeter size. Here's a closer look at these other four. Didn't mean to pass over them that quickly. Uh, don't know. Don't know. Don't know. But this is MPC, it turns out. There's the logo. Notice the circle, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. A, a, a recessed circle is consistent with the MPC figures. So how about that? I got an MPC caveman out of it, too. Cool! Well, I didn't think to get out the full-size Timmy's. I got out a whole bunch of the smaller uh, figures that I've got here. There's a Timmy Geiger counter dude in the smaller size that I've already had. So we've got a lunchbox guy and another small Geiger counter guy. And here, here are the, these little reduced sizers that I've, I've, I've been saving up to, to help work with scale, amongst other things. And um, just to mix stuff up, uh, that's, that's more of a mechanic. That's not a spaceman. That's a giant figure. He may, he may actually be the real thing. I'm not... I, I, we're on giant next to him, just a standard army man. Although I mean, I'm not sure who it's by. Unpainted. I've got some HO scale soldiers that are painted as well. And then there's a Soma Star Rider figure. Uh, opened a, a couple of sets of those. Or uh, uh, there's a LP Toys posed Apollo Blue Shield variant. Spaceman unpainted and next to it a, a golden astronaut chromed uh, by LP Toys from the golden astronaut and SpaceX line next to it. This thing I just got in from Finland, I, I still haven't looked at the listing yet. I think it's a Sumi pilot, something like that. To me, the Geiger counter and another uh, figure, I think that's by Starlux actually pilot or astronaut and there's these two marks figures I'm pretty sure the one who's pointing that's from the Disneyland set and then there's a, a pilot next to it although it was vended as an as an astronaut which is how I happened upon it next to it is an unknown game piece I believe and one of the uh, Tudor Rose figures and a little um, real heroes rubber army man from the gumball machine that I'd, I'd been scoring out and and you know what what drew me to actually getting spacemen is that I was trying to come up with ideas to work with the matchbox and hot wheels 
vehicles for my art last year and I wanted uh, uh, to find figures that would be in the right scale so I could conceivably put them inside but at least have them interacting uh, with the vehicles in, in a way that's effective. That's not, he's even still a little bit too big. Golden Astronaut looks to be about the right size for a Carmen Ghia. He's not bad either, actually. I'm going to get more of him. Um, and I also uh, had taken, these are both actually Matchbox vehicles. This one's obviously a, uh, a, a ATV 6x6, reminiscent of the G.I. Joe vehicle that I grew up with as a kid, and he, he looks about right, actually. No, nah, he's, he's still a little bit too small. Maybe we'll put the Timmy guy with him. And having human elements in the picture became a, a priority. And, and, and the first things that I, that I sought out were these Apollo Blue Shield uh, capsule figures because I wanted something that would be in the scale with a uh, Hot Wheels. I think this actually is a bit above a uh, 1 to 64 Hot Wheels scale as a Matchbox vehicle. And I, I brought these back from Syracuse as well to think about them from this uh, space vehicle set that I opened up. Uh, they're, they're, I think they're a little bit smaller than 1 to 64. This is, this is bigger than 1 to 64 as well. But that was what drew me to these reduced size figures and I'm very excited to have uh, a couple more of these little Timmy guys and, and maybe one to even include in an artwork at, at some point with a vehicle which is which is where I want to go and keep working it up the significance of small things Monica Bertzik from Sculpture Space talked to me about that once one of the artists that she had was making these little miniature architecture things that were just incredible uh, and they were they were I don't want to say fantasy creations but they were severely reduced sized architectural versions as, as sculpture and it might have it planted a bug in me to want to do things small as well anyway. all right I'm gonna insert this into the uh, proceedings here here's the three small reduced sized Timmy figures in the front, the standard size Timmy space figures from the Galaxy Laser team behind them, and then the big size large Galaxy Laser team figure. Unfortunately, they never made a 5-inch version of the Geiger counter guy, which I think is a shame because he's, he's, he's kind of the iconic thing. And, and to push home a point that I brought up before, Here's the difference, the difference between the Timmy figure on the right and an MPC or multiple toy makers spaceman figure on the left, marked on the bottom with the MPC logo. Timmy never marked their figures, and it's difficult to discern vintage from uh, contemporary uh, castings unless you can find them in colors that were, have not been produced as of recently uh, but the, 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 the differences between the, the, the figures they both obviously have Geiger counters the MPC figure has an air hose connected to his helmet the Timmy figure does not the MPC figure has diver tanks on the back. The, M the Timmy figure has a PLSS, personal life support system, backpack. The Timmy figure is also wearing a pressurized, I guess it's a Gemini program suit. And the MPC figure is wearing a skin-tight flight or diver suit. But I'm very stoked now that I can set up little little mind-boggling pictures of these guys in, in, in these different scales. I've, I've got uh, one of each. And, and here's what I meant to also add. I believe the smaller size pieces were made for a Milton Bradley, the Starbird Command Base playset from 1978, same year as the Galaxy Laser Team was first released. The figures may also have been included in individual vehicles from the toy range.
Process Plastics also included the figures in some of their rocket from the late 1970s, such as the Titan shown here, which included one each of the respective poses. But they were not part of the standard uh, Galaxy Laser Team set, and they have been supplied to Milton Bradley by either Timmy or Process Plastic. And I'm pretty sure that my big guy there is, is a vintage piece from, from the late 70s to early 80s. The rest of these I'm not, the, not so sure about, although the way I've got it set up, you can sort of tell that the, this, this Geiger counter guy here has a transparency that, or a translucency that this one does not have over here. The astronaut figures never had any casting changes during the production of Galaxy Laser Team, uh, and since Timmy did not mark their pieces in any way, it's almost impossible to discern contemporary manufactured examples from vintage examples from the 1970s. And, you know, it sort of makes collecting them a kind of a, 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 a simplified process. Any set that you land is as good as any others. And if you see anyone touting these out as 1960s spacemen, they ain't 1978, bro. Catch you later.